YouTube. What is up? Welcome back to the Radar for Rasta Studios. What's up, Box? Guys, Friday Night SmackDown just finished up. We have one takeaway from a show that's pretty much all set up for WrestleMania. The yep. fallout from Fastlane. Uh, you know, we got a couple... You know weird things going on here and and, and announcements for for matches on what night they're taking place at wrestlemania mm -hmm. uh matches announced just tonight on smackdown uh, a lot of issues with Daniel Bryan, Edge, and Roman Reigns you already know what the story was with that all that stuff uh you know we got a lot to get into from you know it's it's a serviceable show of smackdown yeah, it's just it's there fun. to service for wrestlemania that's all it's for yeah. two weeks away from wrestlemania that's all these shows are going to be about just servicing wrestlemania uh so let's get into it but before we do i'm going to drop a like and a comment on here comment in the comment section below what you guys thought of the smackdown what do you think about the what transpired at the end and how this changes mania what do you think is going to happen at mania what matches you think are going to main event night one because it's interesting is it going to be lashley or mcintyre is it going to be bianca and sasha so let me in the comment section which one do you think is going to main event night yeah. one of wrestlemania uh, if you're watching, not subscribe, subscribe to the channel notification. We get a little new videos drop. Social media is the service. Let's get right into it. Friday Night SmackDown started off. Daniel Bryan in the ring talking about obviously what happened at Fastlane with Edge screwed him out of that Universal Championship match. Um, and he's upset. He wants Adam Pearce to come out and, and make this right. Either give him give him a shot at the title tonight in a rematch to get back into the in Mania or do something else. So he stages a good old sit-in and he just sits there for like you know the, the commercial break and then yeah. comes back here comes adam pierce says i can't give you the match tonight um roman's next title defense is scheduled at wrestlemania a one night thing so he's like okay let me get the two night thing uh roman edge night one i face winner night two then edge comes out and straight punks out uh, Adam Pierce, slaps the microphone yeah. out of his hand. It's like, what the hell are you doing, man? Gets in the <laughs> ring, confronts Daniel Bryan, uh, talks about Daniel Bryan. You didn't earn this. I went from 1 to 30 at the Rumble. Uh, you lost twice to Roman Reigns. Calls him an SOB. Won the Royal um, Rumble. So here's the deal. You don't deserve the match at WrestleMania, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. oh. SOB, um, the two brawl, and then that would be the running theme throughout the rest of the show. Adam Pierce and people were walking up to him telling him, you know, you're trying to intimidate him, you better do the right thing. That's pretty much all this you was. Know? Yeah, I mean, interesting segment, the whole him, like, protesting in the ring kind of goes back to WrestleMania 30 time where he was in the ring and the whole crowd came in, so they were kind of throwing that in, in there, so it was interesting. I'm, I'm liking the... Uh, the heel turn from Edge, I always love him more as a heel anyway. Yep. He's such a naturally good heel, so it was actually good to see old Radar Superstar heel uh, Edge. That was pretty good. Segment was good. Um, I'm not super excited about the the, 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 the triple threat. I think it's going to be a great match. I just was, I don't know, Tag and Bryan kind of feels forced in here, but I'm not, not to say it's been bad, but I just don't, I don't know. I It's going to take some some couple more weeks of, of seeing how, how this is going to, to get really excited about it. Uh, but it should be a great match just because it's three really good guys. But um, best part was his edge being the shit out of, out of Daniel Bryan because it was good to see edge radar heel back. So that's that's basically what, 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 what I got out of it. Yeah, it was, it was a decent opening segment. Like, the fact that he he sat there and it went to commercial break and you're still coming back sitting him. Yeah. It was. It's whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's, but next thing on the show, this is the next thing on the show. We have Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Seth Rollins in a rematch from Fastlane. Just for Nakamura to lose again, pretty much. All yeah. this was Nakamura mm -hmm. gets two straight losses against um, Seth Rollins. Here comes Cesaro, the returning Cesaro to attack Rollins in the ring and, you know, call him a coward and kind of help out his, his friend yeah. Nakamura. And they announced that the match is going to happen. Um, I believe it's night one, Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. So we'll see that big matchup for Cesaro. Being the fact that Rollins beat Nakamura twice, I kind of think they may go with Cesaro winning the match, to be honest with you. I think so, Mania. too. I, I really did think so, too. I feel bad for Shin because he... Honestly, him and Seth can, can have a great match like with their eyes closed because they just they have like a really good chemistry in the yep. ring. So it's like that would be a great match to see too. But they just haven't built Shin up to to to, to you know really be viable against uh, Seth, which is a shame. But cause that's just that's WWE's fault. But yeah, Cesaro looks like he might be able to win this match because Seth is going in super hot. And if you have Cesaro beat him, that makes Cesaro even hotter. So I just think it makes the perfect sense to have Cesaro finally get that brass ring that Vince McMahon said that he doesn't get. So. <laughs> Let's yeah. see what happens. So that's yeah, we'll see what happens. But I'm getting more and more optimistic that Cesaro may come out on top. But you know how that shit goes. So it might not, it may not happen. All right. Next no. thing on the show, we had remember the botched finish between Apollo and Biggie at Fastlane for the IC yep. title. So we have six man tag. Biggie and the Street Profits taking on Apollo Cruz and Alpha Academy Otis and Chad Gable. And I remember Otis Smash and Chad up. Gable still have like that that title shot because they won that mini gauntlet uh, mm -hmm. match a couple you know a couple weeks ago. So we'll see what happens with that. Street Profits still. In, I think it's gonna be a multi team four team uh, yeah. title. Tag team title match would be probably thrown in night two because night two seems kind of thin right now. I think out of the two nights, night two is the thinnest in terms of Which matches on the like, card. Yeah, 
Which you're like, come on, night two is supposed to be like the biggest because exactly. it's like Sunday night. It's, Sunday it's like night, the original yeah. night. I mean, I don't know. Come on, guys. Step yeah. it up. They announced majority of everything is for night one so far. I think they yeah. have three to four matches on night two, so that's that's bound to change. Uh, but so this match, Big E, Street Profits, Jake and Apollo, and Otis and Chad Gable. Uh, match was what it was. You have Big Montez Ford doing the big dive on the outside, and while that's happening, you have Apollo hitting the Olympic Slam on Big E, so he gets the win. Now, okay, so they botched the finish. Who knows what the ending of Fastlane is supposed to be like? Uh, yeah. Who knows? And then they just give Cruz the win now, and then they announce, boom, he gets the uh, IC title shot at WrestleMania. So Cruz, I mean, uh, Apollo, you know, Apollo Cruz versus Big E at WrestleMania for the IC title. We all knew it was going there, but it's just like yeah. a it's kind of a misstep going on the way there yeah but i think it, they wanted to have apollo look good and win a match and be yep. the guy and you know have his theme song going and, and, and you know he's the one that won the match yeah you have to keep him strong and be, make him viable so i think it was i mean that was a weird ending and it was a botch but so far he's looking kind of strong with the aftermath of fast lane where, where he beat the crap out of Big E and this you know where, where yeah. he gets the gets the win it's making him look good so i mean I still think Big E wins it at Mania. I think, he, you know, it just it makes more sense for him, for him to be IC champ for longer. But Apollo is finally, you know, getting his his due. So it's it's, it's, it's good to see that. Yeah, I kind of wish, I kind of hope that Apollo wins it at this, like, screwy finish where he cheats to get the dub uh, yeah. on, on Big E, wins the IC title, and they have, like, a little bit of a program. A little bit after that, maybe you want to switch the, the title back to Big E, or you want to get Big E ready for the title, the main title, the universal title yeah, after yeah. this. So we could see yeah. how that goes. Next thing on the show, KO Show. So you have the KO Show. He's in the ring calling out Sami Zayn for the Huluva kick that he received uh, last week. Here comes Sami Zayn with the crew, you know, the, the filming crew. I think he said next week he's going to have the red carpet from here. Logan Paul is supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> Kevin Owens is saying, Kevin Owens saying like I need an answer from you from this question, but you know Zayn doesn't let him ask the question. The question ends up being he wants a match one on one against WrestleMania. Wow. Yeah. You know what a question. Um, yeah. Zayn says awesome yeah, question. back into a corner. He beats Zayn down afterwards, drops him with a stunner on the outside. So um, yeah, you know it's I, th- this is basically. Um, giving these two guys the opportunity to have their rivalry and their matchup against each other be on the, the biggest, biggest show of the year. Show this ever. is what it's all about, yeah, because this feels like the, either they had this planned out for a while or they just planned it out like very quickly just recently, but this all just seems like, all right, Zayn, Owens, years-long feud. We keep going back to them every every, yeah. every couple years, so let's give them a match at Mania, and that's it. If you're a fan of the longtime fan of the whole rivalry and you love these two guys, this is the shot for them to have their rivalry on the biggest stage. So that's all this is. Yeah, I mean, that's it, this feels like we don't have a lot of matches for, for Mania. And let's just put two guys that are going to have a great match because they've, they've done it for years and years and years all over the indies, all over WWE. Yeah. So let's just let, 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 let's have it. Let's do it. Let's, let's give them their time to shine. And they're going to put up a great match because that, that's what they do. They're just two boys from Quebec. So it should be an, an interesting match. Um, it, but definitely feels like we just have nothing for these guys. So let's just... Put two guys that we got up to four in a great match in Mania. So, you know, kudos to them for doing it. Yeah, that's pretty much all this is here. Next thing on the show, we have Bianca Belair going against Natalia. Um, you, then you have, during the match, you have interference. Well, a distraction kind of from, um, you know, from Bian- uh, Sasha Banks as she comes out. Yeah. It allows Tamina to attack Bianca Belair with the referee's back turn. She does commentary, uh, Sasha, after this. Later on, Bianca will fall to the outside of the ring. Sasha will talk trash, and Bianca will slap the living hell out of her. Um, <laughs> Um, good slap by her. She straight dropped like a sack of potatoes on the floor. Yeah. Boom. Sasha Banks came. And then Bianca goes back in the ring, gets the finish, beats Natalia in a match. Um, I understand why they do this, uh, put Natalia in a ring against her because she's a veteran. And it's a good way just to continue to look, make her look strong. Bianca going into the title shot at WrestleMania, which seems like, let's get into this though. Well, first off, why bother, you know, spending time with Nat- Natty and Atal and Tamina if you're not really going to put them into, you know, anything important, the tag yeah. team title picture, right? Like, you yeah. might as well start putting them in tag title. But let's talk about this. The way they did the promos for WrestleMania, they said night one is this, night two is this. They started naming the matches and what night they take place on. Bad Bunny versus The Miz, night one, so on and so forth. Um, you know, they announced it as Bobby Lashley versus Drew McIntyre WWE Championship will be the mid-main event. And then... Like the co-main event, and then the main event, main event, because the last thing they showed for night one was Sasha versus Bianca. Now, okay, that's fine. What I think the WWE Championship should be put on last if you're gonna do it like yeah. that. But they have two championships to deal with WWE Universal, right? So that's what they want to do. Um, I understand it, you know. Uh, 
I think it's because they might want to switch the title off of Bobby Lashley, and they just want to want to do it at the end of the show. They want to do it in the middle of the show. That's what I think, but who knows? But it was interesting that they put it that way. So we'll see what ends up being the main event. Let me know in the comment section below what yeah. you think is gonna be the main event of night one. Will it be Lashley McIntyre? Or will it be Sasha Bianca? Um, I mean, it's not the first time it's been done. I mean, a no, couple yeah. years ago, WrestleMania in, in, in uh, at, at MetLife, um, Seth Rollins beat Brock. It was the first match at Mania, exactly, and then yeah. the, the, the main event was Charlotte, um, Becky, and uh, and who was the other one? Was it uh, Ronda? Yeah, triple threat, Ronda. Yeah. So I mean, it's it, it's been done before. It's not something out of the world. This feud isn't as hot as that other feud was, no, but yeah. yeah. But that's why it's not one and not night two. So. Yeah, you can tell the placement of it, how, the, how hot the feuds have been. So you want the hottest feud to be the end of night two, which is Roman yeah. and, and Edge and all that. So you want that to be the hottest thing. That's the hottest thing there, mm -hmm. night two. So these have been lukewarm builds. Bobby Lashley, we're happy as hell he's champion, but the build with him and McIntyre has been lukewarm at best. Yeah, and at then best. You, yeah, and then you have, so they've got stuff they're going to add in night two, probably Sheamus, Riddle, maybe Keith Lee, a triple threat, um, you know, if he comes back. At, they got Because they got stuff to add, the big tag team match probably, um, and, and that stuff. So let's see the next thing. Ray Mysterio versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, Mysterio gets the win here against Ziggler. So, again, it seems like four teams are going to compete at WrestleMania. You have Alpha Academy, Street Profits, the Dirty Dogs, and, and the Mysterios yeah. um, for that those tag team titles. It's just obvious, right? Like, at this point, it's just obvious that this was going to happen. Um, but if it doesn't, God knows why it wouldn't. Um, but that's probably like a night two thing. All right. So, let's get to the big decision. Um, Adam Pearce has been going back and forth between Roman and stuff like that. So, I like this. The one part I liked about this the most was Roman in his locker room area back there. He tells Paul Heyman... And Jey Uso to go get Adam Pierce, and you know they're pretty much gonna intimidate him, right? And, yeah. and you know Jey Uso's like, "You sure?" And he's like, "What are they gonna do? Fire us?" You know what I'm saying? Like that's good, that's good stuff. Like that is good, yeah. good, that's, that's, good stuff. That's like naturally good heel. Like, yeah. man, come on, man, kiss my ass. What are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's really really that's small. It's yeah. a small thing, but it's such good stuff. When you, if you're notice, if you notice it, yeah. it's such good stuff because it builds the character even more. Again, oh, yeah. Jimmy's the missing piece to all this for me is that to make it like just the most like amazing thing you could probably think of is just Jimmy Uso because I do want that crime family oh, kind of feel. I it. think it's coming and, and they'll be surprised if at the, at the main event yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying they both up. don't help like yeah. I mean I, I think it's definitely possible because they ain't taking that strap off of, off of Roman yeah Not, uh, so we, we have a big decision we have uh, you know you have Edge you know walking up on Pierce too as well and you have Dan Bryan walking up on Pierce then Pierce comes to the ring um, he's in the ring and then here comes Roman, Edge, and Daniel Bryan. He yeah. says, Pierce says, the match is going to be a triple threat match, right? He's not gonna the three of you will compete in a triple threat match. A triple threat match, right? He's not going to do anything else. Roman's going to defend it one time. It's going to be a triple threat. However you feel about this is one thing, um, but... Whether you're happy about Brian being in it, people are saying this could be this is probably la Brian's last WrestleMania, so that's why they're giving him this kind of send off here because he's Possible. probably going to just be a very very sporadic part time after that and not really be involved. This could be his last full time run, um, yeah. which is great. I mean, you want to put him in a spot. Well, however you feel about Brian being in this is however you feel about it. I think the best thing about this though um, is the mental aspect that it plays on the heel turn of Edge. Right, so he's coming into this. Obviously, he came back after all those years of, of being forced to retire with the injury. He comes back, has that that series with with uh, Randy, Randy. Orton. Tears his tricep, is gone for like nine, ten months. Then he yeah. comes back at the Rumble, goes from one to thirty to win the thing. Then he gets a shot at WrestleMania against you know he picks Roman. Obviously, the biggest matchup he could pick is Roman. Um, yeah. And now this guy just kind of jumps in there and kind of trying to take his spot. So in terms of of just being a human being and it being in that kind of mental state that would piss you off. yeah of coming back from all that adversary yeah. uh, adversary and then getting back to the spot and then having just some dudes just kind of jump in there and try to hijack it um yeah. you can obviously see so in terms of reality mental uh, men and, and mentally thinking psychology wise it makes a ton of sense i think it's very well done i'm not a huge fan of Dan Bryan being put in here but i know as to why he's being put in here probably for multiple reasons a lot of people say he's on the you know he's on the booking he's got you know he's booking it so he's booking himself into a spot he's on creative so he's he, doing a dusty oh, yeah man. so he, he, has, he has creative like you know stroke in the back so he's doing something yeah. who knows i don't know but um you know i think maybe it's just fan service that you know or helping him out because his last wrestlemania whatever or yeah, it's just they want to get the belts I mean, off just... roman but not beat roman so edge wins or daniel bryan wins but they don't they pin each other and not roman so that's what comes out of yeah. this you know this is the one takeaway as you see the picture behind us it's announced triple threat match at wrestlemania um it is what it is i'm enjoying this story in in the aspect of how it develops roman continuously and how yeah. the edge has has changed and how 
psychologically it, it's it's intriguing to me you know how that whole thing because you see him at the end after he attacks everybody it's everybody with a chair hits pat buck and jamie noble mm. um you know he's, he's blasting guys with chairs. He's, gonna, noble, he's, he's gonna hit the concerto on daniel bryan before all these guys come in then he sits down in the ring and just has like a maniacal face like a pissed off face in the ring so it's, just, it's, it's the mental aspect that i enjoy yeah yeah, and I'm, you know, I'm excited to see the feud over the next couple of weeks before Mania just to get going and Edge, you know, being on there and and just getting involved with all two, with all three guys being involved with each other and just showing what that yep. feud is, is building towards. And I'm, I'm sure Edge uh, being a heel, like I said earlier, is, there's nothing better than Edge as a heel. He's just so good, and especially he's maniacal, like the way he was and psychotic and crazy. I think he's completely snapped, and that's a good, you know, wrench to, 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 to throw in the storyline. So I'm, you know, I'm a I'm not super excited for the for the match just because Daniel Brown's put in, but I'm excited to see what they do in the following couple of weeks to get to get me more excited for 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 the match. I think they will because I mean you have three awesome talents like you got three of the best guys in the company arguably. You got the number one guy in the company, and then you got Edge who's a Hall of Famer. You got Daniel Bryan's Hall of Famer. So there's definitely a lot you know good mix of of talent in there to get us excited for it. So you know I mean let's. Let's let, let, let's just feel the ride, see how the next couple of weeks go, and I'm sure going in, we're, we're going to be more excited about the triple debt if you're not already excited about it. Yeah, you got two more Raws and two more SmackDowns to kind of continuously set up more, yeah. more and more stuff. So yeah. we'll see how it plays out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it kind of it is what it is. But remember this: when's the last time Roman in his new incarnation has had a bad match? He's been on a roll of just banger after banger after yeah. banger. The worst thing you could probably say he had was maybe that triple threat with the Fiend and and Braun Strowman. It's probably like, but that you know, it's just. This. No, but but even though that was cool because he came in halfway through the match and just signed the paper. Exactly, and yeah. Through, so know, it wasn't like really was, much of a match, but it, the yeah, way he did it, the was, way he carried himself, it was, was just awesome. it was all about development of the character. But that was good, really I good mean, stuff. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like t- his only bad match. I mean, you can give shit when he was in the, on, in the Shield or when he was still, you know, everybody hated him as as the it's as the Undertaker match. It's the only bad match he ever had. He's yeah. never had a bad match. I mean, the only match he did as bad was the Undertaker match at WrestleMania in Orlando was because Undertaker was broken down and he was being at that point. That's really the only match. Yeah. It wasn't his fault. It was a bad match. Yeah, just Taker wasn't. You know, his body wasn't where it needed to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could find another match here and there, but for the most part, like the most notable match that he had that was bad was just that match. So yeah, you know, what's big, the last big, big time matches? He shows up and that was, always has a good match. Ex- Can't fault him on that yeah exactly but guys that's a review for smackdown that's our one takeaway more build up and more build up and more build up and more build up for wrestlemania the card is really look all that great compared to nxt's card but it continues to flesh out and we'll see how everything turns out in ring wise yeah. you don't that can be much to complain about if everybody gets some no. s- substantial amount of time you shouldn't be able to complain about much of anything on the card storylines three you nights can, <laughs> storylines and builds where you complain for the most part but guys that's a review yeah. appreciate you guys for tuning in remember like subscribe com- let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of this triple threat match are you excited for it who do you think is going to win um and all that and then what do you think about like you know like i said the main events how do you think it's gonna play out what's gonna be the co-main event for night one and the main event for night one uh let us know in the comment section but appreciate you guys for tuning in for this work but not do the job later marks